Hi, I'm Frank Kirkovic and I'm just going to show you this uh, basic tutorial on how to create this double exposure effect in Photoshop. And what I find is easier is if you have your two pictures saved on your desktop like I do here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this uh, charming little side profile headshot that I have and overlay it with this uh, landscape of trees. So the first thing we need to do is op open Photoshop and you see it's not located in my dock so I'm just going to go up to the spotlight start typing in Photoshop and it'll pop up there just click that on and if it's the first time for you to open this you might find that yours could possibly look like that and all you do is simply click these little arrows to expand it. Me, myself, I prefer the the long profile view here. So you see we got a blank area here and what we have to do now is get our two photos into Photoshop and there are two ways to do this and I'll show you both. So I'm just going to click in this empty space here and Photoshop will go into the background. So the first way is if you just click on your photo and drag it over the Photoshop icon it will import and the second way is if you go to file open and you can select the photo from there. So I'm going to first work on uh, the profile pic and what we want to do is go to the eraser tool which is just located here and if you click and hold that you see any of these tools if they have this little triangle in the corner it means that there are more options available so if you, if you have one of these you would simply just click and hold it and select the eraser tool. Now what we want to do is we want to go up to this area here and if I just click that and I'm going to put the hardness at 100% and I'm going to increase the brush size because I want to erase all this background area here. So that should be fine so just click and close that and all you do is simply click and drag around this area to erase. So I'm going to also do the shirt area as well. I'm going to try to get as close as I can. And around this area I should do a little bit more curve. If you make a mistake like this, if you simply press the command key which is next to the space bar along with the Z key, that is uh, edit step backward. So I'm just going to go around and you don't have to worry about getting too close here because we're going to change the tool slightly to get in a little bit closer later. Okay now I want to get closer into the hair area so to zoom in on the picture you're going to press the command key plus the plus key we can go in a bit closer there and what I want to do now is go up to the brush I'm going to change the size slightly and I'm going to turn down the hardness and I'm just going to try to go around a little bit closer and then just to reposition the photo I've uh, just use the two finger slide on the on the mouse mouse pad now depending how well you do around these edges is can of course influence your uh, end product and to get in here I'll just make the brush a bit smaller And I'll zoom out by pressing Command minus, and you can see it there. Now I'm going to go to the second pick. So what we want to do in the second photo is remove the sky area here. And to do that we're simply going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and go down to Replace Color. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and select this blue. I'm going to go over here to result, click on that, I'm going to change that blue to the white, the brightest white I have, click OK, 
I'm going to turn the saturation down on it. Maybe turn up the lightness. Click OK. So there's still some more areas I can do. I'm just going to give it one more try. Click on that blue. Go to result again. Crank up the sat saturation. Turn down the lightness. And that's just too much. So we'll click on that result. I think it's moved. I could go one step further and do this, but for, our pur for the purpose of the tutorial, this should be fine for now. Now what we need to do is add this photo to the other photo. So I'm just going to select the black arrow here, and I'm going to press Command A for all, and I'm going to do Command C for copy. And I'm going to click on the first photo and do Command V to paste, and you see it pops up down here in my layers. Now what we need to do is set the blend mode to lighten and to do that we're going to go up to layer up here. We're going to go to layer style, blending options and this little selection tool here we're going to change this to lighten. I'm going to click OK. I'm still using the black arrow and now you can click and drag and how you want the picture to be. Now if I want to resize the picture, you see when I click it you can see the border of the frame, but it's kind of hard to resize now. So to do that we just go to Edit, Free, tr free Transform, and the boundary box will appear there. Now if I click on one of these, you'll see it kind of just squishes the picture together. So I'm just going to app Command Z that. So instead we should use the corners here, hold down the shift key, shift key to constrain the size and the dimensions, the aspect ratio, and now I can just start doing that. And remember if you want to go further, I'm just going to do command minus, zoom out a bit, expand the box so I can see the corners a bit more, maybe enlarge it a bit. I like the way that looks. Now I'm just going to press return. Now I'm going to select my headshot here and I'm going to press command U and see this opens here and I can further play with this a little bit if I wish to experiment with how light it's going to be or if I want to play with the saturation or anything like that. I'm just click OK and I don't really like how that's looking. So I'm just going to remember edit, step backward. Now I want to save this also as a JPEG so I'm going to go up to file, select save as and I'm just going to change this format from Photoshop to JPEG and click save. I want to keep it at a high quality. Click OK. If I just click here in my desktop area you'll see it's here. I click to open that and now I can simply just drag it into iPhoto if I need to uh, further crop it. Now one thing you should do also if you want to keep this file with the pictures itself, so I'm going to save the file, cell photo, it's on the desktop, just click OK. Now I'm going to quit that, click save, OK. So there's the Photoshop file now. These two photos link to this file, so if I want to keep it all secure and safe, I should make a folder and store all three of these together. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.